Hi, welcome. This is uh, Clemens at Elector. Uh, this video is about a special instrument I received for reviewing, a uh, current meter for low power device development. It's called the OT Arc and is made by Swedish company Koitec. The OT Arc looks like a power supply because that is uh, what it is. It is not an adjustable uh, lab bench supply uh, with up to 30 volts uh, 3 amp output, but a small power supply intended for low current uh, low power applications. Actually the OT Arc uh, measures very precisely the current consumed by its load. The OT Arc does not have any uh, user controls like knobs or buttons uh, and it doesn't have a display either. Uh, it only has connectors. The device is controlled from a computer running the OT software that also displays the captured data. When connected to the USB port of a computer, the OT R can supply up to 3.75 volts in auto ranging mode and up to 4.2 volts if you push it in high range. It can source 2.5 amps continuously and 5 amps peak, but your USB port may not like that. If you connect an external 7 to 9 volts DC power supply to the OT, it can output up to 5 volts. Using the OT is pretty simple. Let's assume that you want to analyze the power consumption of a 3 volt battery powered wireless device like an IoT sensor or so. All you have to do is connecting the OT in place of the battery, launch the OT control software on the computer and after setting up the power supply's output, start recording. Much like an oscilloscope, you will now see a trace of the current. Ok, so why not use my uh, oscilloscope instead? Uh, well, you can of course, but it's quite a hassle to set up a low noise uh, precision uh, differential measurement and uh, see what's going on over an interval of minutes or even hours. Even a high precision multimeter with logging capabilities uh, would have a hard time doing this. If the load current uh, remains below 20 milliamps, the OT can measure it with a resolution of 5 nanoamps. When the current is below 2.7 amps, the resolution is 82 microamps and up to 5 amps, the resolution is 1.5 milliamps. The device samples with a frequency of 4 kHz, giving it a time resolution of 250 microseconds. This is all very precise and it allows you almost to monitor current consumption on the software function level. And that is exactly what the OT is for. With it you can analyze how the software running on a low power device influences its current consumption and with that how long the battery will last. As an example I have this BBC microbit board connected to a BME 280 weather sensor, this tiny thing here, uh, that captures temperature, humidity and atmospheric pressure data. Uh, the BBC Microbit has an NRF5 based radio and it runs uh, MySensors uh, IoT networking software. The first approach is a basic Arduino sketch that reads the sensor once per second, transmits the data and does nothing for the rest of the time. Let's record that data for a few seconds. Ignoring the peaks, the average current is around 17 milliamps. When the software does nothing, it uh, runs around in the function loop. Now this is of course a waste of energy, so let's see what happens if we make it sleep instead. We make a recording of the new situation too. Now the average idle current drops to about 1.8 milliamps, which is about 10 times better. Now is a good time to quickly look at what you can do with the recordings. You can zoom and pan around and recordings can be aligned easily with the selection tool. Recordings can also be hidden and, of course, uh, deleted. Data can also be exported to a CSV uh, comma separated values file. So back to our optimization job. Another thing we can do is put also the BME280 sensor to sleep when it's idle. We make a new recording and see that the idle current now is only 1.3 milliamps. To our surprise, we also see that the oscillation is gone. Apparently that was due to the sensor. So by making the BME280 sleep, not only the current consumption dropped a bit, we also removed some noise. You would never have noticed this with a multimeter. The current consumption is still quite high for a low power device. The microbit has a magnetometer and an accelerometer, uh, but they are in standby mode, uh, I checked that. However there is also the UART that is still being used, so let's switch him off too. This time the idle current doesn't drop much, about 5 microamps. 
but we see that the high power peaks have become shorter and the overall average consumption is lower now from 2.3 to 1.7 milliamps. This is a difference of uh, 600 microamps uh, which is more than 25%. There is one more thing to try, uh, which is related to the JTAG interface of the NRF5 uh, microcontroller of the BBC Microbit. After programming the board, the debug interface remains activated and continues to consume current. Uh, to switch it off, you have to power cycle the board. Doing this makes the idle current drop to 193 microamps. This is still relatively high, but we will stop here. To go deeper, we have to study in detail the power down capabilities of the uh, MySensors uh, library and uh, the Microbits uh, microcontroller, which is out of scope of this video. Now, if we compare the average current of the first experiment, corrected for the debug interface current, of course, uh, to the last experiment, we observe an almost 50 times drop from 16.8 milliamps to 344 microamps. For a common uh, 3 volt CR2032 uh, button cell, this means an autonomy improvement from about half a day to almost one month. This brings us to a second function of the uh, OT Arc. It is also a battery emulator or simulator if you invest in the uh, battery toolkit license. A database with batteries is available on GitHub, but you can also profile your own batteries by recording the discharge curve. The OT can then replay the discharge curve and you can observe how your device works with the battery. The battery toolbox is a rather interesting option, but it comes with a price tag of around 500 euros per year. For comparison, the license free Keithley 2281S Precision Programmable DC Power Supply and Battery Simulator retails for more than 3000 euros. It's up to you to decide what is best for you in the long run. You may have noticed the rectangular connector on the front panel of the OT Arc. This connector gives access to a few more analog inputs and also to digital inputs and outputs and the serial port. There is also a 5 volt power supply output. The serial port is practical as it lets you see debug information, for instance, sent by your device, or you can send commands to it to make it change the operating mode. The digital outputs can be switched on and off from the OT program and the inputs can be graphed. This is very interesting as you can use these pins to let your device indicate when it's executing a certain part of the program. This is for instance great for pinpointing which part of the program is responsible for a certain current spike that you observe. Finally, the OT software can be enhanced with the Enterprise license. This will give you the battery toolbox, a TCP server and Lua based scripting. It will also get you enhanced tech support and service and even training. With scripting you get full control over the device, the GPIO pins and the captured data. Automating tests also becomes possible and you can talk to Lixi enabled instruments. A list of scripting examples can be found on the Coitec website uh, together with the documentation of the API. Ok, that brings us to the end of this review. Wrapping up, I think that the uh, Coitec OT Arc is an interesting instrument for anyone trying to get uh, the longest battery life for his or her uh, wearable or uh, IoT device. It is well built, uh, by Sony Belgium actually, and the hardware and software are easy to use and you get uh, quickly results. Analyzing the graphs may even reveal information that would have gone noticed uh, without uh, using this device. For me, the standard version is uh, probably enough, but uh, people who want to uh, squeeze the most out of it may want to opt for an enterprise or battery toolkit license, um, even maybe just for one year. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, thank you for watching.